Hello, Star Citizens, and welcome to another ship sale. We This is our third ship sale in three weeks, so CIG needs some money. <laughs> so before I start this, let me, all, let me, I want to begin these videos from now on by saying everything can be purchased in game. You do not have to purchase any of this stuff. So when I talk about this stuff, it's for the people who have already decided that they're going to purchase things. It's not for the people who are saying, just buy everything in game because that is a perfectly valid way to go about these ship sales because CIG needs money, but you don't have to give them money. <laughs> now, that sounds rich coming from a guy who has spent way more money than he should have on this game, but that doesn't change the fact that it's true. All right, so let's find out what this ship sale is about. It looks like it is a uh, kind of pirate week, pirate week sale, of course. Uh, but I think I don't know if that's the only sale that's going on. So first we're going to go over Pirate Week and then we're going to go over this other sale that seems to be happening right now. So first Pirate Week. Oh, actually, let me let me just remind everybody that today is the day that we should be able to announce the, the ship that we're going to give away. So if you're trying to win that, uh, make sure that you like or dislike at least one video make sure you are leaving comments and make sure you are subscribed to be entered to win or of course you can join and be a part of a 25 percent chance to win automatically um so you can hit the join button or the subscribe button it's up to you actually while we're at it let's just announce what we're going to give away right now and i think you're going to like it so it's going to be a mantis with a game package and it's going to have lifetime insurance and it's going to include the Skull Crusher skin, and it's going to include the M50 skin. So Mantis, lifetime insurance with the, with the M50 skin, with the Skull Crusher skin. Well, it'll be the Skull Crusher skin for both the M50 and for the Mantis itself, and it'll have a game package. So that's our giveaway. So let's see, 2024, what do we have? Oh, these were leaked. These were leaked. It is the Vulture. It is the Scorpius, it is the Mantis, and it is the M50 that are getting skins. So I'm assuming those ships will also be available for purchase. Uh, the, all of these look awesome. The, the, this is, I, I don't see a single one of these that isn't worth buying. These are some amazing skins. I'm definitely going to buy these and melt them into buyback because all of these look awesome. Just from what I see here, the skull on the back, all black with the skull on the back all back with the, all black with the, all black with the skull on the back i can make songs anyway show us your plunder community contest so uh show us your latest or greatest bounty of stolen cargo that's the community contest so you'll probably be able to win one of these ships and some skins and then there's the fly the colors so complete the pirate swarm mode and we'll earn the right to pledge the caterpillar and gladius the pirate gladius and pirate caterpillar that's always available and then run the blockade uh yeah so they they started the blockade the blockade event is going on that's the the other reason for this video so i don't know the name of this video should be like pirate week sale and blockade runner sale i well we'll see i don't know if there's a sale yet for the pirate week I, i'm assuming there is because why wouldn't there be uh, but i know there's one for the blockade runner so and then uh, behold a treasure map if any crew oh there's a treasure hunt four cunning clues await ye now with more surfacing later this week now this i like this is the type of in-game stuff we need so there's a treasure hunt i wonder what you get out there oh uh yeah the code for this is is always fairly simple so yeah i i it may or may not be somewhere in the comments or on my discord you gotta check both because i don't know where i'll post it all right so let's see what these packs are about all right so we got the avenger titan pirate week starter pack that's a good deal because the avenger titan is always a win uh we have the cutlass black pirate week starter pack comes with the the pirate edition of the cutlass black that's always a good deal because that ship is always a good deal now what is this scourge of the stars pack let's see what this is about six hundred dollars war bond uh oh it comes with all those ships plus the skins for those ships let's see the vulture i believe is 175 the m50 i believe is 
20 something. Ooh, I don't actually know what the M50 is. The Scorpius is two something and the Mantis, I believe is one something. So not much of a deal. It's, uh, this is a weird selection of ships to get. Um, the, the Vulture is a salvage ship. So that, and, and I think that's a great ship to have in general. But the rest of these are the more pirate focused ships. So the Vulture, I'm, I guess I'm a little confused why the Vulture is a pirate ship. I guess because you can salvage people that you've, that you've uh, soft death. So that's probably why. That, that would make sense. But uh, this is an opportunity to get all these ships for, um, for cheap. But to be completely honest with you, I think you're better off just, let's see. It has the paints in it, so that's saving you like five, 10, 15, 20 bucks there. Oh no, this has six month insurance? Oh, absolutely not. War bond with six months insurance? Nope. <laughs> that's an absolute, no, don't buy that. Folks, folks, don't buy that. Why would that come? This is, this, this pack has never, this pack has never been created before. Why is it six month insurance? That should be LTI. If, they, if this had LTI, I could understand one or two people buying it, but without LTI, that's no. Uh, the Dual Enforcers pack, okay. The Scorpius and the, what is this? I, I hope all of these don't have six month insurance. Oh, these all have six month insurance. We don't even need to review these people. Yeah, we don't need to review any of that. This whole limited time pack thing, you can just go ahead and skip that. Just automatically skip, automatically skip. I don't know whose idea that was, but that's a terrible idea. Is the, is the, are these, hold on, let's go back. Let's make sure these two are coming with LTI too. Nope, six month and six month. Yeah, you could just skip all this. You could skip all this. You could skip all of it. There's no reason, no reason to get any, anything in the limited time packs. Now the pirate paint. Now let's see if this is worth it. You get the Hercules. Oh, every, you get every, uh, every pirate paint. Now that. At $86, let's see, how many paints are in it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 times $5 is $60. No, I'm sorry, I wouldn't. I can't. I think if this was 75, I could probably stretch my 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 belief to believing it was worth it. But at 86, I can't do it. Um now if you specifically love meridian paints and skull crusher paints i could see you getting this but also only if you have all of these ships i have i've spent a, a lot of money on the game and i only have what one two three i only have three of these ships maybe four four i might the fourth one i'm definitely getting in, in game but i i mean unless you have all of these ships i just don't see why you would get that uh and instead of i'm not saying why why you would get the paints why would you get that instead of just getting the ships that you want now the skull crusher four paint pack it's still a little overpriced but that's closer to believable as far as like the paints uh i like i like all of these but I, as far as which ships i'm going to end up with i'm probably only going to end up with two these these are definitely overpriced i think yeah i think all of these are overpriced these should be six, seven dollar skins. Um, this one being seven dollars is probably means it's the only one that's not overpriced. So, will I be picking them up? Uh, not to keep. I'll, I'll probably get them and then melt them into buyback. But I'll probably because uh, I, I I won't own a mantis. That's just not. It's not a level. It's not a type of gameplay I'm interested in at that size. So. I won't own one of those. The Scorpius, I will definitely own one in game. The Vulture, I'll own one in game. The M50, not so much. So I would be buying these for $20 and then melting them into buyback. I just don't, $20 for two paints is, that seems excessive. It's like right on the limits of what I think is acceptable at all. Um, $10 paints are, I think, I think $10, $10 paints are normally excessive. But, uh, I mean, it's the limit of excessive. It's like right at the top top limit. But I, I might I might pull those two off. Who, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, and then they have the classic pirate paints. Um, if you really like the Meridian paint and you have those four, four ships, I could understand. 
I'm not buying this for $13. Not buying this for $11. Not buying that for $11. Not, I'm not buying any of that. Uh, the Solar Winds pack. What's that? Three paints. That's $6 each. $6 and what? Like 15 cents each. Uh, that's not bad. If you have all three of those ships, that's not bad. Uh, especially considering they're completely unpurchasable outside of the Solar Winds for the uh, Avenger. Yeah, I wouldn't get any of that. I like that these are available. Maybe this is maybe these are going to be available now. Let me see if they're available. Okay. Yeah. So you can buy these separately. The flare is uh eh. but this is what we really came here for, folks. We came here for the war bonds, which the Mercury War Bond, RSI Mantis, the Scorpius. No M50 War Bond? Come on. You could have gave us an M50 War Bond. You could have gave us one. But I'll take it. Uh, the Scorpius War Bond. Let's see. Let's see. Before we go into whether or not to buy the ships, let's look at the War Bonds. Let's look at some War Bonds. I, let's see what we have. So there were some War Bonds already. So the Freelancer Max War Bond was already available. But let's see if the Mantis War Bond is better. Because I think the Freelancer Max War Bond was $10. Yes. So let's see if the Mantis War Bond is any better. It is not. It is $10, so the Mantis War Bond is essentially useless. Um, because we already had the Freelancer War Bond. That was very weird. I don't know why they did that. Well, I guess I do know why they did it. Because the Freelancer Max War Bond will probably end soon. So then you'll still have a $10 War Bond at the $150 price. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about as far as War Bonds and CCUs and upgrades and stuff like that, I do have a tutorial, so go check that out in the tutorial playlist. So let's see what the next one is about, which is the Peregrine. That one's already been available, so you should already have that one. Uh, the Andromeda. So let's see. I think this one's $20. Yep, that one's $20. So that's a decent one. Not great. It could have been $25, uh, but it's not bad. $20 is a decent CCU. I would pick that one up if you're, if you're working on something. Uh, you know, you could always melt it later if it's not, you know up to snuff with with future ones um i am currently working on trying to do some things which i'll talk about closer to uh to iae but yeah so i might i might pick up some of those uh andromeda war bonds let's see about this scorpius maybe this one's 25 oh did they do this again look at this the andromeda and the scorpius are both the same price and they're both 20 dollar war bonds so kind of a waste they did it twice where there's two war bonds for the same price 150 for the max and the mantis and then 20 for the andromeda and the scorpius huh now me personally i would go with the andromeda for the war bond because it's not i don't i don't think the andromeda is a limited ship as far as i know i'm pretty sure that's always available so it's definitely more available than the scorpius so I would definitely go with the Andromeda here if I'm working on a CCU chain, unless the Scorpius is a ship that you want to stop at while you wait for the, the next ship or the ship that you're waiting for it to come out. So, yeah, but that's an interesting. All right. The Mercury, at least hopefully 25. Nope. That one's 20 as well. So at least they give us two direct war bonds, right? So you can get the Scorpius and you can get the Mercury and stack both of those. You could stack both of those. I think let me see yeah I think you can stack both of those because you're buying it at 240 and then you're buying the other one and then you're upgrading 260 yes so yes you can stack those um yeah but so what is that uh let's see I'd say it's two war bonds it's it's really two war bonds um because you could choose between one of these two and then get the mercury one um and don't for, don't forget the whole c1 is still available for people who are trying to get one of those more expensive ships but yeah interesting interesting so because for me like i think most of these are like eh, eh. like I, there's nothing here that i think the price is going to go up on uh yeah none of these i, I don't think the price is going up on any of these so it's not like a must buy war bond thing yeah so uh the a2 is pretty much as high as prices go in star citizen so i wouldn't worry too much about that all right let's cut back 
All right, so let's go over the ship sail itself. So I have talked to death about the A2, so I'll keep it short with the A2. I think the A2 is worth the money if you get upgrades to it. Now, you're going to have to play the CCU game for probably about a year to get the type of price I'm talking about, or at least start now and do it all the way till uh, IAE and then get all of the war bonds at IAE starting from the cheapest ship possible. But if you can get this for 550 or less, I think it is totally worth it. And I also think that because of how much it costs in game, it is one of those ships that might be worth purchasing outside of the game. Now, am I telling anybody to go out and buy the A2? Absolutely not. You can get it in game, so get it in game, right? But for the people who have already decided they're gonna spend money, it's, it's, a, it's a meh purchase but i think the ship is more than a man i think the ship the ship is heavily underrated and it just got a buff so now it's going to have uh another shield generator so it's going it's going to be even better than it was before so it's got the turrets on the bottom uh it's definitely a ship that you should be flying with friends it can still carry a tank it can still carry 200 plus seu of cargo it's got three pilot controlled weapons. It can drop the bombs from the pilot seat. It's a, it's a pretty good ship, but it's $750. <laughs> the Ares Inferno. So this one has been heavily nerfed into the ground. That being said, it's still useful for what it's meant for. And I think what people were upset about is because it had developed this alternative use where you could just kind of take it out and fight anything with it, but that was never its intended purpose. It was always supposed to be a sub capital killer now it was never supposed to be a capital killer like it says even though it says it's a capital killer with one size seven gun you are not killing capital ships you're just not you can if they if they're terrible or if you're going against a ship that that is not meant for war like maybe a hull series or something but the chances of you running out of ammo before you kill it are very high so it's more so can you kill a capital ship with it not if you only have one you're gonna need two or three, but that's what I think they mean when they say capital ship killer. If you get if you get a pack of these, you can kill a capital ship. And I think it's better, instead of just having a pack of these, to pair it with this one, which is the Ares Ion, and this one will take down the shields, the other one will, take, uh, will do the hull damage. I think if you have these two ships and you go at a capital ship, you can win. Uh, because this one won't run out of energy, um, the, as long as the, the, the person in the Inferno takes smart shots, the Ares Ion could just keep shooting and shooting and shooting and dropping that shield. So if you play smartly, just having an Ion and an Inferno, you can take down a capital ship. If you don't fight smart, you'll, you'll need at least three, whether it's two Ions and an Inferno, three Ions or three Infernos, you're going to need at least three. Uh, but do I think they're worth 250? Absolutely not. There right now, looking at the CCUs available, you can get it for what? Right now, you can get it for, let's see, 10, 10, 20. You can get it for $210. Is it worth it at 210? I would still try to get it for less than that. I'd say 175, 185 is a, is a, is a decent jump off point for this. Uh, I would say 175 actually, I'll go 175. So if you're trying to get one of these, I would CC you up to it until you get to like 175, and that's for both versions of it. I know the Inferno gets a lot of uh, uh, a lot of the credit, um, and mainly that's because you can turn off your power to weapons and then get more um, more more power to engines and shields in the Inferno, which you can't do in the Ion. So I do think it is the better purchase, but I do think the Ion still holds its own because not having to reload is huge and this one i think is more prepared to take out like the medium ships and you know some of the larger ships because it can just stay in combat longer uh so that's that's one thing i would say about those two get them at 175 or cheaper the avenger stalker always a good buy if you're in the if you're looking for uh for starter ships uh and you're looking for something that you know can have people in it you got the titan here uh, you got the the Warlock, the Titan, and the Stalker. All three great purchases. Uh, the Warlock, unless you specifically are into that, you know, disabling gameplay, 
uh, I would hold off on the Warlock because it is more expensive. I, I think the Avenger Titan and Stalker are the choices to make here. Do you want to keep prisoners um, or do you want to carry cargo? I think the Titan is uh, the better buy for the most part because it's kind of a multi-role ship. And all three of these are extremely fast right now, but that's with current balancing. So just be weary that once, three to, or once the 4.0 comes or 3.25, whichever one we end up getting, uh, I think that could change so even though they're really great flying right now don't judge it off that just judge it off the fact that they're great ships and they're very cheap for what you get so there you have it that's that's my opinion on all three titans really the c2 hercules i think again this is one of those where you're going to want to save some money on it it is it worth 400 not quite it's 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 a little bit overpriced i think it should be 350 and and the good news is you could easily ccu to this for 350 and my biggest issue with it was that it didn't have a tractor beam but now with the invention and the uh sale of the atls i no longer think that not having a uh tractor beam is going to be an issue for ships like this so now that you can have the atls stashed on the side of this thing without losing a whole bunch of cargo like if you were to put the mpuv tractor in this you would lose a bunch of cargo space well not a bunch but enough and i think now that you can have an atls or even multiple atls things in this without losing a bunch of cargo space i think drastically improves the utility of this ship so this to me officially becomes the best hauler in the game if you have an atls as far as now um, because one of the biggest flaws it had was that it didn't have the tractor beams um, and it could store all of this cargo. But now with the ATLS, especially if you got two of those things and you're crewing this properly, which is three crew, you can definitely use this as your sole cargo ship. And the three size five weapons are great. Um, I would replace all those with ballistics and, and, and do that. I can't wait until we can actually reload our weapons from inside the ship. That will be really cool. Um, but yeah, great ship. Uh, it's, it's a really great ship. I still, even with all the changes I said, still wouldn't put it at 400. Um, this one just got buffed as well. Uh, but I still wouldn't put it at 400. I still think it's a $350 ship. But again that's very easy to achieve just with what we talked about today i think you can get this at 350 with the stuff that's available now with the war bonds that are available now so great ship to purchase same thing with this one um i think being able to fit an atls on this one is even bigger because it doesn't take up all the space but then like the the track this this one already has tractor beams but i think being able to have the ATLS to put the stuff on and then use the other tractor beams for other things like have have those be unloading while the ATLS is is loading I think is is great um and if you if you're wondering how I feel about the ATLS I somebody go look in the reddit posts and I I have this whole thing about the the whole drama surrounding the ATLS I won't make a whole video about it I just I just said what I said and it's somewhere in reddit in the star citizen reddit so you can go read that look for billionaire ninjas in there somewhere uh and yeah and then that's that's all i had to say about it uh but the pirate edition i think is really cool looking i think this is the, the version if i was going to own a caterpillar this is the version i would want at 330 i think it's correctly priced but i still think you should get it for 275 or less which again is very easy to do um the the uh caterpillar is a great ship uh this module here the module of the where where the pilot sits can detach from it it's also going to be heavily modular which is what i think gives it that 330 dollar price um value and yeah i, I think it's going to be a great ship i think most people who own a caterpillar are satisfied with what it's going to be not necessarily what it is now because right now the caterpillar and the carrick are very limited on what they can do with cargo and that's part of one of the issues with this particular patch is that they basically made two ships that are flyable mostly useless so hopefully they fix that soon and then that won't be a problem uh let's keep moving though we got the cutlass black this is one of the best starter ship advanced starter ships let me be very clear one of the the best advanced starter ships in the game it can carry 40 plus su of cargo you can see here it's got multiple guns that decent guns on it it's maneuverable enough to to, to stay in the fight it's got multi-role gameplay 
it, it's it's a great ship. It's a it's it's one of the the most um, useful ships at this size that you can get, and its utility is knows no bounds. So even at 110, this ship is awesome. But you could still you can even get this for cheaper. You could probably get this for 90 bucks if you wait if you're patient. So yeah, it's a great ship. The Eclipse. I was a little harsh on this in my review, uh, but that's also because I didn't know that it had those weapons on the front. Uh, but even with the weapons, I still think my review was close. I think the problem with this is it's it, it the bombs are too big for what it does. It's it, it comes with the size nine bombs, and I feel like it should have size. I would rather it have twice as many size eights than having three size nines, or I'd rather it have three size tens because then at least it can one shot kill things and I don't need as much ammo. So I think nine was an odd choice, but, and this is a huge but, uh, I think all it needs is balancing. I think if they balance the torpedoes to do the damage that I think they should do, which I don't think anything less than a sub capital should survive on a, a hit with a size nine torpedo. I think size nines and size tens should put fear in the heart of everyone that is not in a capital ship. I mean, even in a capital ship, it should put a little fear, but a size nine should put a fear into anything sub capital or below. A size eight should put fear into anything that's sub capital or below. A size seven should put fear into anything large and below. Uh, and so should a size six. And then the size five should really be put in fear in the heart of the mediums and um the mediums and the heavy fighters because that that's that that just makes sense on a hierarchy um for who should be scared of what and of course size tens could then just be for you know shooting at uh for the at the the big capital ships and of course like i said if you balance this correctly and put three size tens on it i can understand or even just alternate right like you can have one size 10 and then like you know four size eights or something like that so it can you know go up and down a little bit in the range but three size nines at least with the dirt the damage they currently do doesn't make a lot of sense to me for 300 dollars if it was 200 dollars, i wouldn't have a problem but it's very niche but it's also awesome looking and that i cannot get over this ship's a beauty it is it's one of the few ships that if people bought it just because of the way it looks i got no problems with it i got no problem it's a beautiful ship it's it's that you know it has that stealth bomb. it is a stealth bomber and it looks like a stealth bomber so i get that i i think stealth bombers are some of the the most gorgeous ships in the game so i have no qualms with people who part who purchased this ship i just hope that you got it for 200 dollars or less um, because that's what I think it's worth. Uh, and I just hope that they fix the, 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 the capabilities of the size nine to make the ship worth more. Um, but it does have those guns on it to make it, you know, at least you can do some fighting with it. Not great, but um, I think that's another issue with it is that it's not maneuverable enough for what it looks like. This ship looks like it should be extremely maneuverable um, or extremely fast. One of the two um, because of how aerodynamic in it, it is. So yeah i just think yeah it needs a buff in one of those two areas either make it faster make it or three areas make it much faster make it much more maneuverable heck four areas make the guns bigger to where it has a secondary use or make the missiles bigger or smaller uh and give me give me more of them or buff buff those missiles the Gladius, it's one of the best fighters in the game. However, it is a little nerfed in the current patch, so it's kind of performing where I think it should perform right now. Uh, I don't, I know there's a lot of people who are huge fans of this, so I'm not gonna say like, you know, don't don't buy the Gladius. I think the Gladius is one of the better fighters in the game, but I am an Arrow fan, so I, I think I would be leaning more towards the Arrow. But at the same time, it's all up to you because when you're at the the fight when you're selecting a fighter below 120 dollars i think it's just based on your play style do you want more maneuverability probably go with the arrow do you want a uh, faster straight line speed you know what, what what do you want like you 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 can decide at 100 at 120 dollars or less what type of fighter you are do you want more guns and less 
uh, and less speed? Or do you want more speed and less guns? Do you want better shields? Do you want, and then you could just make your choice down the fighter list, but the Gladius is a solid choice. And I think one of the things that I like about the Gladius is that the Gladius is, it's a novice type ship. Like if you just hop in a Gladius, you'll do fine in a firefight. You won't do great, but you won't do terrible. You'll do fine. Um, and, and I think that's kind of the idea of the Gladius. It's it's the, the baseline for all other fighters. So if you got one of these, great. Even if you paid $90 for it, it's totally worth it. The M2. Now, I'm on record saying that the M2, I think is a little less useful than its lower counterpart and upper counterpart. And that's mainly because of the Ironclad and the Ironclad Assault. I think the Ironclad Assault outperforms this ship and it's only slightly more as far as cost. That being said, it only outperforms it at the cargo hauling and defensive capability aspect. It does not outperform it in its maneuvering and its ability to get in and out of atmosphere. This thing will fly better than that ship. So what I think you're really choosing from if you're getting an M2, if you're thinking M2 or Ironclad Assault, do I wanna do more hauling because if I want to do more hauling, then I should get the assault, uh, the assault, and then you know maybe add an uh, ATLS on that thing, or an MPUV. But if I want to do more assaulting, like I, I legitimately plan on using this ship to go in, drop tanks, go in and and fight, you know, and and get get into more fights with the actual ship on purpose then I think I would go for the M2 because it's gonna fly better, it's gonna maneuver better. And I think if you're going to actually intense, in, in, intentionally fight with the ship, the M2 is the better choice. Although it carries, I think almost exactly half the cargo. Uh, well, not exactly half, but like, I think it carries about half of the cargo that the, the, iron, the Ironclad Assault carries. The Ironclad Assault though has a garage and that is huge, but I think the Ironclad Assault is more meant to be landed and fight rather, or, or, or to be stationary and fight, whereas the M2 is more meant to move around a little bit. So is the M2 worth it? Long story short, yes, I think it's worth it if you have that specific need, but if you don't have that specific need, I think it's better, you're better off getting an Ironclad Assault. Now, at 520, absolutely not. I don't think I don't think it's worth $520. I've never thought it was worth that 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 amount. Um, this ship you should be getting for $400 because that's what I think it's worth. 420, I guess, is okay, uh, but 400 is is what I would aim for, and you could easily get this ship for $400. Even with the the CCUs that are available now, I think that gets you 80 off 80 off of it. So you're already at 440. Just keep holding off. Wait until IAE, and you'll get something that'll fill in that chain and then you can get this thing for for, for the price that it, it should really be sold for um but i think the, the price went up on this from for something so it might have actually been sold at the correct price in the beginning so um the m50 i'll be completely honest i have very little experience with the m50 i think i've only flown it one time so i really can't talk about whether this ship is worth it outside of what the meta is currently <clears throat> and the, the the meta for the m50 is great right now but i i have to caveat that by saying right now the meta is great but i don't think the the, the m50 meta will change very much because it's a fast ship and it has some decent little guns and and and, and uh missiles on it you know is it great i wouldn't say it's great uh but it's good and that's one thing like i said when you're when you're at the hundred dollar range you're not you're, you're, and you're choosing a fighter, one of the things that you have to choose is what do you want out of a fighter? Do you want it to be faster? Do you want it to be tougher? Do you want it to have more guns? Do you, and that's what you're really choosing if you're selecting a fighter at this range. And the M50 is fast. That's what it focuses on. But one of the things I love about the M50 is it has really good weapons. Like for, for its size and its cost and everything, because it has the little missiles and it has the um, it has the, the the guns on it. Now, one thing I do worry about when it comes to ships like this size. So this ship has a, a jump drive, and it has the ability to quantum travel, whereas something like the Fury doesn't have that. But if I'm going to get a ship that's this tiny, I'm probably going to be carrying it with a bigger ship. 
as far as the way I play. I, these ships aren't long distance or anything, so I don't think anybody really should be going out to fight with these unless it's close to your home base. So I think most, most of these should be kept in a hangar or something like that. And if I'm keeping things in a hangar, I don't know why I would choose an M50 over a Fury or uh, even an Archimedes. Um, I, I just, I those ships, either the Archimedes or Archimedes and Merlin, um, are faster or and I think more useful for their dedicated role or the Furies just have better weapons and are faster so it's like it I, I guess it depends on what you want now if you need a small ship with a quantum drive so you can kind of chase the enemy a little bit and not you know be dependent on whether they stay in this quantum field um, then I get it you know uh, so I think it's a good purchase but I think you have to determine what are you going to use it for the Mantis the Mantis you can it's the only ship in the game that can do what it does currently so it's already valuable for what it can do um i still think you should save money on it and i think you can save you should be able to save at least 40 bucks on this and get it for 110 so if you get it for 110 or below totally worth that uh but it can stop a ship from quantum so somebody's going through quantum this can pull it out of quantum um and that is a very unique capability and it has decent guns on it not great though i would love to see this with some slightly better guns so you can actually defeat the person uh when you when they arrive but i think it'll get balanced that way but yeah right now it's the only one that can do what it does so it's hard for me to say that it's not worth the worth the money like i said though i would try to get it for 110 or below um but yeah if you're looking for a ship that's kind of like a, a, a you could say it's a cop a cop ship um, you could say it's a great pirate ship, which is why they're selling it. I think this is probably the single best pir single person pirate ship in the game because it, you can stop people and blow them up, you know, or make them give you money, whatever it is, right? Uh, and, or just, you know, you can hold them and fly around them, not even kill them. You could just be like, I'm just going to keep pulling you out of quantum drive until you give, or uh, out of quantum until you give me money. You know, I, I think it has great uses for that. Um, but when the police start using it, I think it'll get a little bit annoying. But yeah, for, for its use case, I think it's a great ship to purchase. The Mercury. So look out soon for a Mercury versus 400i redo video, because I think that one is going to be very interesting. But the Mercury is a great ship. It can fit one of the best vehicles in the game, which automatically makes it a winner. And that is the Ursa Medevac. The Ursa Medevac can go on the back of one of these and you'll still have a little bit of room for some cargo. You can also put an ATLS on this without taking up any cargo space which is huge so this is how the atls has changed the game i talked about it with the c2 now that you can basically add a tractor beam to any ship without taking up a whole lot of cargo space the atls has changed the meta for what ships are useful and aren't this has just officially become a great cargo ship and i'm glad that i waited before i redid that 400i versus mercury video because if i would have did it like three weeks ago i would have had to redo it again because the atls launched so the mercury is an excellent ship officially it is it has it has surpassed all of the previous issues except for the fact that it needs a second entrance which it will get that too so uh the mercury just became one of those ships that if you've held on to it through all the commentary and meta talk good on you um it's worth 260 completely worth 260 um but i will say again you can get it for cheaper right now actually you can get it for 240 so there you have it um but i think what would i pay for it is probably different uh i would pay 180 for it i think that's the most i would pay for it is 180 and you could get it for 180 if you ccu correctly so if you pay 180 or less for it, you're you're in you're in great um, great condition. I think when it came out, it was either 200 or 225. So those people are already getting it for a, a solid deal, but they probably got it for cheaper than that as well. So great ship, the Pirate Gladius. So I won't go over this. The Pirate Gladius is just the same thing with uh, a different paint skin. I do really like this paint skin, but I'm not paying 10 extra dollars for it. So if we go back to the Gladius or uh, 20 extra dollars for it, if we go back to the Gladius, it's $90. So you're essentially getting this for 20. You're paying $20 for that. Now you also have to, to beat uh, some uh, something in Arena Commander to be able to purchase it. And I like that. I like, I like the rarity and I think that's what you're really paying for, but I don't think it's worth the actual cost. And that's always been my issue with the Pirate Gladius. I do think the Gladius is great, 
but I wish the Pirate Gladius came with like a better, better guns or something like better missiles. I don't know. It was tougher or something um, just to I like justify that extra $20 in price because I would at this point, I would just get a regular Pirate or a regular, a regular Gladius. The Scorpius I talked about a little bit. I think this is going to end up now. Currently, the wings are soft as, you know, uh, uh, as something, I don't know. Like they're soft as clouds, they're soft as pillows. Uh, so I, I, I don't like the fact that the guns are wing mounted and then those wings can get popped off and all of a sudden now all you got is a turret. Don't like that. But, but before those wings come off, this thing can fight. And I think it's in the top tier of heavy fighters. Um, the fact that you could put two people in this thing, I really, really like that. Uh, so it's, I think it's a capable fighter. I think it is well, a well-equipped fighter. And I think it's also overpriced. Um, I think this should be a $200 ship. I don't think it should be 240, but I don't think it's much overpriced. I, I think I think if you get this for for 200 or less, you're good. Um, but I would pay I would pay 180 for it, and I think you can get it for 180 if you do your CCU incorrectly. 180 is probably the most I would pay for it. But it's a really good ship. I like the I like the weapons. I like the loadout. I like everything about the ship. I like the way it looks. Everything I like about this ship. There's nothing to dislike except the hull HP of those freaking um, or the HP of those wings. Now the Scorpius and Terry's. Is a little different um the loadout for this one i think is slightly incorrect but it can disable and that's what it's really meant for it it's good at what it does and i do like that it's ten dollars cheaper than its brother over here um but it, it's still missing some of the features that it needs to really become uh amazing but i think once it gets those things it will be amazing for the same reasons that uh, the scorpius is uh, because uh, uh, just some of the some of the disabling features are kind of wonky and some of the disabling missiles are missing still like certain things just don't they're not balanced properly for the Scorpius to be great now but if you got a CCU to this absolutely great and it's the same thing I wouldn't pay any more than 180 for this as well and you could even say 175 because it's supposed to be cheaper than the than the, its brother so there you have it but I still think it's a great ship it's just very specific in its use the Vanguard Harbinger. So I'll do this one together with the Vanguard Hoplite. I don't like the Hoplite as much. I think the uh, the Vanguard Harbinger is the best one of the Vanguard series. However, when you look at this price difference, you can kind of see why I would still have trouble buying the Harbinger. For almost $300, it is, now, it is a fighter, a two-seater fighter, right? because somebody could be in that turret <clears throat> and then somebody could be flying it it has an interior and it has really decent guns it just needs to be balanced better and they did just give it a slightly better balance i'm hoping that that it comes with a, a maneuverability uh balance as well and a speed balance as well because if it does that then it becomes closer to being worth it not worth 290 though you should be getting this ship for $200 or less. And for the Hoplite, you should be getting that for 180 or less. Um, those, this, these two ships are not worth it, even with, if it gets those things. Because if you're paying that much for fighters, and, so actually, I, yeah, I'd say $200 is the most that you should be paying for the, the Harbinger. And it is a good ship if you get it at that price. But with those changes that I'm saying it should have. The Hoplite, 180 or less. And to be honest, I wouldn't pay more than 160 for it just because I'm not a huge fan of its uh, ability to, it, yes, you can board with it, but it doesn't have a dedicated connector to help you board. And it's a drop ship, but it doesn't meet a lot of the things that I would want in a drop ship for that price. So it's I, it depends on what you want out of your ship. It's a fighter drop ship. So it's capable in a fight. And yeah, I, 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 I guess it just depends on what you want out of your drop ship. And yeah, that's it. Uh, so I think we got the war bond was $20 for the Crusader Mercury. It was $10 for the Mantis and $20 for the Scorpius, I think. So yeah, I think I think it's a decent sale. I wouldn't say a great sale. I, I guess I'm, the, I'm more, the most impressive thing about this sale is how many ships are available. 
the A2, they've been making available a lot because I think they're buffing it and then seeing if people purchase it. Oh, we just buffed it. What are you going to do? <laughs> like, you know, because I think a lot of people are kind of waffly on the A2 because it's so expensive. So they've been doing things to try to get people, I think, to, to push towards uh, finally purchasing an A2. Um, but the amount of ships for sale here, this is a lot of shit. Now, these three are always available, but the C2, um, the Eclipse, the M2, the, uh, the M50, the Mantis, the Mercury, the Scorpius, the Antares, the Vanguards. I think that's a lot of ships to have in a sale. Now, uh, that isn't the only sale. Okay, so we still have another one to go over. And I know this video is probably getting super long. So, uh, yeah, stick with me here because this is what CIG does. And I'm not making another video. So we're just going to do both, both sales in one video. This one is a smaller sale, though. Um, so I already talked about the War Bond, which is the Andromeda War Bond. Um, but yes, this is the ship sale related to the Blockade Runner. So this will probably run out yeah so 13 days so this is all gonna run the same they're, they're running along each other um and then of course you can do the blockade runner missions which i've heard are fun i haven't participated i'm still taking some some time off of star citizens actual gameplay because i think i just might as well just wait for 4.0 uh, i'll still get in and fly a few ships but i don't think i'm going to be participating any heavily in any of these things uh maybe i'll get out there and look for that you know secret treasure or something um but that 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 might be it uh but let's go over these because i think this is worth going over as well the c2 we already went over in the other one <clears throat> the andromeda i used to i if you would have asked me three years ago what i thought about the andromeda i'd be like it's okay but now the more i see the updates that this is getting the more i think of this as the kind of standard bearer for star citizen I think if if I was going to tell somebody you only it, like I'm somebody was like I'm willing to spend a little bit more on the game but I need one ship. I think I would tell them to get the Connie Andromeda. Um it's either that or the Taurus. But the reason I would go the Andromeda over the Taurus is because the Andromeda can fit the 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 P or it has the um the P52 on it. It can fit any vehicle up to an Ursa, including the Ursa Medevac, or it can carry cargo. It has docking collars, it has multiple um entrances, and it it is very well kitted. Like the size fives on this thing, the missiles on this thing. I mean, it has a very soft belly, if you know, you know, but I I just I it, I can't get over how well this ship operates in most roles like it's the it's the it for so like the cut the cutty black is considered kind of one of the do everything ships like uh not do everything but like better multi-role ships at its price and i think if i was going to tell somebody what's a guaranteed great ship to upgrade to i'm going to say the constellation andromeda if you're upgrading from the black and you have no idea what to upgrade to, I would say the Andromeda is a great next step because it can also be a fight. It can be a final game ship. Like this could be the last ship you ever need to purchase. And that's not an exaggeration. You know, you can do so much in this ship that it, it's kind of ridiculous. Now, I don't like the, the visibility of it um, as much, but, you know, it, that's that's uh, uh, that's a, a nitpick, really. The ship is great. I think anybody who purchases it, even at $240, it's worth it. Um, but again, you know me, I, would, I wouldn't pay any more than $200 for it. But at the same time, I think if you own one of these, you're in a good, you're in a good position. I love the ship. I love the ship. Um, now, for $10 more, you can get a Corsair. And here's why I think either is a good choice. Now, the Corsair is definitely going to be the better fighter as far as shooting and shooting whatever's in front of you. But outside of that, it's worse in all the other ways. <laughs> it can't carry as much cargo. It has less hull HP and it doesn't have as many turrets. It also doesn't come with the snub. Th those are my reasons, but the, the front facing power of the Corsair is incredible. And as it is with both of these ships, 
If you have a, a third person with you in both of these, that is what makes them go. If, you, if you're out there soloing a Corsair and, and soloing a uh, Andromeda, you're missing out on what makes them legitimately great ships. And it's the full use of their firepower and the full use of their crew facilities. Um, the Corsair is more soloable, I would say, than the than the the Connie, if you like weapons. But if you like defense, then the Connie is more soloable. Um, so again, uh, it all depends on what do you want. And uh, the Corsair has better guns, but the Andromeda has better missiles by a long shot. The Corsair has better guns by that much but the, the the andromeda has better missiles by a lot so there you have it there's your choice between the two um but yeah both are great uh this one same thing wouldn't spend more than 200 dollars for it uh you can get this one at 185 even i think the cutlass black i already talked about the cutter one of the best starters in the game i used to say it was the best cutter but i have since changed to thinking that i think now the cutter rambler is the best and that's mostly because of the existence of the Mirai Pulse, which I believe now you can fit in pretty much any vehicle. And I would rather take a Rambler with that uh, extended range and then take a Pulse with me, unless I was more centered on cargo, and then I would probably take the Cutter. And then, you know, you could put, you could fit a Steve or STV in the, in the, uh, the Cutter. But at $45, I mean, there's nothing to complain about. Get it with the game pack and it's already worth it. Um, I think you get it with a game pack for 60 or 55, I think. At one point it was 50. I don't know if it is now, but um, I think you can get it with a game pack for like 60, 65 bucks. It's worth it. it there, there, no discounts necessary. It's it's worth it. The cutter is the one of the ships that if you start with it, you're, you're golden. The Freelancer Miz. I just did a review on this, so that should tell you what I think about it. I do think with some balancing it can be great but currently it is a skip for me i would purchase one in game if i really liked it but i'm not spending 175 on it i wouldn't even spend 150 on it i wouldn't even spend 125 on it i would spend 110 max on this thing and if you can get it for 110 great if you can't then i would go ahead and skip it but it is good with its guns it's just there are better ships directly above or directly below for what it can do and that's my biggest issue with the ship so keep with that what you will go check out the the, the misc freelancer series review if you want more details on this one but like i said it's a basically it's a skip for now for now even with that buff that it just got the mercury i already went over the nomad this is a really good starter ship if you know for a fact that you're 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 going to take vehicles with you because this ship can fit a decent amount of vehicles and it can fit a decent amount of cargo on the back of this thing now it is a massive target in the sky so if there, if your primary purpose isn't let me bring a vehicle with me it's a hard sell and 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 that's only because of how massive of a target it is now there's other ships that are massive targets so i'm not saying this is the only one but you have to really when you're buying a ship under that 110 mark you really have to figure out what do i want to do with this ship and this one is the vehicle carrier the 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 under under 110 uh, or let's say under a hundred dollar the under a hundred dollar vehicle carrier starter so if you know up front i'm going to want to carry some vehicles um then this is what i would get now the smallest ship that can carry an Ursa Rover is the Freelancer Max. So I would, you know, if you're looking for a, the true vehicle carrier, you're going to have to pay, you know, a little bit more and get the Freelancer Max because that can carry all the vehicles Ursa and lower, which is the majority of vehicles that people need to carry. And of course, it can carry a rock and stuff like that, but this can carry a rock as well. And that one, you know, it's 150, I think it's either 140 or 150. And you should be, you could get that one for 110 easy. Um, and this one you could probably get for 60 or 70 or get it with a starter pack and then it's automatically worth it. But just to, again, you have to kind of to figure out what you want your starter ship to be. Um, I think it's a little too expensive. If it was $15 cheaper at 65, it would probably be the best starter in the game. But at 80, I think you can, you can save that extra money, um, and, and get some, some slightly, slightly more value ships. Um, and that's that's what I would say. But I, I completely understand the people who choose the Nomad first. 
Because again, if that's the specific type of gameplay you like, it's always gonna be the better ship to you. The Valkyrie, oh wait, did I go? I think I skipped the Valkyrie on the on the other one. I think the Valkyrie was in the other one. But let's check, uh, yeah. Well, we, we can, we can, we can, we already did the, the, um, the Harbinger, but we'll, we'll, we'll go Valkyrie and then we'll do the Warden. So the Valkyrie, this ship, it just got a much needed buff, but even with that buff, I think that, I think the ship is great. It just doesn't have a lot of gameplay of, it doesn't have a lot of what it's meant for in the game yet, but I still think it's a great ship. And the main reason I think it's a great ship, it can carry an Ursa Medivac and anything that can carry one of those is already going to be good now is it great well with the buff it might be inching in inching its way into great um i still think it needs a slight front weapon upgrade so i think this turret down here and these front guns i think need a size bump um if that if it got that um and became a little bit tougher i think it would be one of the best ships in the game but I think they're purposely kind of nullifying it because think about what it has to contend with, right? It has to contend with the M2. It has to contend with the Ironclad Assault. It has to contend with the with the uh, the Prowler. So the 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 Hoplite. So there's other dropships, but I do think this is the best dropship currently. Now, if you have no need for vehicles or uh, storage or anything like that. I could 100% understand you going for something like the Prowler, and I do think the Prowler is better looking, but the Prowler is very limited in what what it can do. So just just remember that. Uh, how much would I pay for this one? I'd say 315 or less, and you got a pretty solid deal. It's a it's it's kind of it's kind of correctly priced to be completely honest with you. With everything you can do, I think you can fit what 18 people on this thing. Um, multi crew gameplay out the wazoo you know you can you can uh multiple stations for people multi-role gameplay um being able to fit an ursa on it a decent sized guns it's it's a it's a win it's a win it's absolutely a win so if you pay 375 don't worry about it but i do think 315 is the best price for this i, I mean not the best but a solid price for this like if you can get if you can get 60 dollars off of this thing then I think you you won in the price wars, but I've been able to get it for 290. Um, I think actually no, I got it for 260. So yeah, there's 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 ways where there's a will, there is a way. All right, and we already went over the harbinger, the warden. So this is the only other. Um, well, no, I wouldn't say it's the only other because I think the sentinel the sentinel will end up being good. It's just not that great now. But the warden is probably uh, and, and this is and this is my problem with both of these, right? I, I do think they're not priced correctly. But I think the Warden is a good ship, and this is the heavy fighter version, right? But it's the interior of these that makes them great. And I just wanna keep putting that up, that these things and their interior are what make them great. It's not just their fighting capability. So when you consider the, 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 the interior of these, that's what really makes them shine over the standard heavy, heavy fighter. But again, it has the same issues as the Harbinger. It's overpriced. It needs better, either better forward speed or better maneuverability or better guns. And and if it had any of those, it would immediately become amazing. But right now it's just good. Um, and again, um, the same way for the for the warden. I wouldn't I don't think I would. I think I said 200 on the warden. I, I wouldn't pay more than 180 for this 185 for this. So, yeah. And that is it. Whoo. Long video. But we went over the, what is it, CDF, I guess you could say, the CDF sale. Um, I'll call it the Blockade Runner sale. And we went over the Pirate Ship sale. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I think I think we did it justice. Uh, a few War Bonds, I'll probably pick some up. Uh, because I'm, I'm on the road to IAE at this point, and I'm, and I'm, I need, I got, I think, what? There's, there's, there's just some, I'll, I'll say that there's some chains that I need to finish. Um, and I, I think this will help. I think this will help a lot. These two, these two sales, there's at least three CCUs that I'll, I can pull out of this that will help with my journey, you know? Um, not to mention the other ones that are available from the previous ship sales, so. Yeah, uh, shout out to the members. Uh, you know, 
thanks for thanks for being members man this is this is incredible every time i i've been logging in i've been seeing like new members and stuff like that so i see you all you know i check it every day uh you know and i i really appreciate that and i just appreciate everybody for watching man these are some long videos so if you made it through this whole thing like congrats man this is huge um so yeah but the long form content it, it happens sometimes sometimes it needs to but anyway that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for spending your time with us. Peace.